Hey y'all, how you doing? It's your girl Emma D here, thinking thoughts about things as always. And today we are thinking thoughts about Miss Caroline Ellison. Mm -hmm. And once again, Miss Sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. Girl, I see you and your games. Okay, so, hi, first of all, I missed you guys. It has been a couple weeks since I posted. It's been, like, forever with all the holidays and all the things that have happened in life and things and so much. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I've been thinking about it, and it's time to talk about it because now there are so many thoughts, so many thoughts. So, what do we know? All of a sudden, we've got some some things that have happened over the last week or so. Um, so, Gary Wang, Caroline Ellison, both uh, pled guilty to, uh, I believe, seven charges for her, five for him, um, all kinds of things. They both, uh, but the, the thing we need to know is that they both said, uh, we knowingly did things that were illegal. Uh, we conspired to do these illegal things um, with full knowledge, and that's what happened, and we want plea deals. So, they are both out on $250,000 quarter of a mil. That's not bad. All right. Bail um, with trial set next year. And then SBF is back in the States and he was given a, an unprecedented $250 million bail um, non-collateralized, which is, I don't even know what it means at this point. It's a trillion dollar non-collateralized bail. But yeah, no, he, um, so he's with his parents and all that's great and wonderful. Um, but yeah, that's not where the story ends. Uh, so I want to talk about that. Oh, oh, also too, um, he's now pled guilty because they've come out and said things, which we'll talk about because isn't it interesting? He came out and he's the only one that said anything. He was singing the whole song and dance about how it was, um, negligence at best and uh, uh, innocent by by ignorance which is a plea and they hadn't said anything so he was telling them you know this is what we're gonna go with until they popped off and made their deal so um yeah that's that's cool so let's talk about this real quick we got gary wang so let's give a little recap on mr gary here so he was the co-founder of alameda research and fdx uh he is rather mysterious he was the ex googler uh he served as chief technology officer for both of the firms um reportedly a childhood friend of bankman Fried. Gary Wang is not like his co-founder, Bankman Freed, who loves fame and putting himself at the center of public attention, even when people are begging him to stop tweeting, LOL. In fact, there's little public information about Wang, who has been described as a shady but critical player in the rise and fall of FTX. Wang met Bankman Freed at math camp in high school. Later, they became college roommates at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where Wang got degrees in mathematics and computer science, and Bankman Freed received a bachelor's in physics. Before co-founding Alameda Research and later FTX, Wang worked for Google. Uh, he claimed to have built a system of aggregate prices uh, across public flight data, uh, according to an introduction on the Future Funds website. When Megman Freed left the Jane Street hedge fund to start Alameda in 2017, Wang left the giant tech uh, to join him. Okay, um... The startup had its beginnings in a three-bedroom Berkeley apartment. We know this downstairs serves as its office. The firm shifted to Hong Kong in part to take advantage of the arbitrage opportunities in Asian Bitcoin markets, including the price discrepancies between BTC and Japan and BTC everywhere else. So this is this is primarily how uh, SBF became who he is. When they were at Jane Street, uh, the arbitrage is the thing that happens with, within the systems when there are uh, advantages that can be taken in different markets between taxation, um, variables that that change the price differential from one market to the other. And so if you can move money efficiently uh, throughout the markets and then cash out on the back end, you're, you're just cycling. You're, it's semi-legal, but whatever. So arbitrage, um, it's thing, and that's, that's where SBF came from. He learned a loophole and then he saw the exploit in crypto and he was like, hey, that's cool. Um, we can exploit, we can exploit the hell out of that. So that's cool. So that's just that's a little bit um, about uh, Mr. Gary Wang here. So he's guilty and he was in the Bahamas penthouse thing going on there as well. So um, 
there's someone else I want to talk about because Gary's been there from the beginning, but someone that no one is really uh, talking about from the early days is a, another mystery woman, um, Miss Tara McAuley. Miss Tara, so I'll put all the links to all the things. Um, so this is a report that came out. Early Alameda staffers quit after battling SBF over risk compliance concerns. Um, so years before SBF's crypto empire collapsed, a group of employees quit in a power struggle. After becoming concerned about what they say was his cavalier approach to risk, compliance, and accounting. The employees that uh, at his trading firm Alameda Research were some of his earliest colleagues, including Alameda's co-founder, Tara McAuley. They left in 2018, well before the crypto exchange FBS, FTX grew out of Alameda. Both FTX and Alameda are now bankrupt. Yeah, we know that. Uh, Mr. Bankman Freed plays huge bets on crypto assets, but paid little heed to the risk of those bets, brushing off the staffer's concerns. According to people familiar with the matter, uh, the firm commingled trading capital with operating cash and had poor record keeping that left its profits and losses unclear, they said. That's interesting. Sounds like someone huh, maybe knew some things before. Okay. So he didn't want to feel constrained, um, said Naya Buskel, a former software engineer at Alameda who left with Miss McAuley and the others. But as a result, we ended up not really knowing how much money we even had. Mr. Bankman Freed told Wall Street Journal that the staffers left the firm because of personal disputes, their lack of productivity, and that Alameda addressed the accounting risk and other issues they raise. Right now I'm focused on doing what I can to do right by FTX customers, Mankman Freed said when asked about these issues. Okay, um, some of the issues identified by groups of former employees are similar to those identified recently by FTX new chief executive brought on to manage the firm through bankruptcy, uh, people familiar with the matter said. I and a group of others all quit in part because of concerns over risk management and business ethics, Ms. McAuley tweeted on November 16th. My heart goes out to all the victims who tr whose trust was betrayed, saving, savings lost and livelihoods, livelihoods destroyed. Okay, um... Alameda was started by a group led by ASBF and Ms. McAuley in the fall of 2017, two years before the launch of FTX Crypto Exchange. Early on, a team worked in-house in Berkeley, California, before moving business into various apartments, local offices. Most of the early employees said they were uh, dedicated to effective altruism. That's a theme we'll circle back to eventually. Uh, the movement that aims to give more effective charitable donations. They viewed Alameda as a way to make a lot of money trading cryptocurrencies, Profits that could be funneled to charitable causes, employing EA principles. One sec. Okay, so. So we have this Miss McAuley here, right? So she was early on. Excuse me, um, and, the, and Gary was involved at this time. This is early, right? This is when it, it's all Alameda. So when it was an arbitrage game, and it was just a loophole. So they were all Jane Streeters, right? They, they traded stocks. They found crypto. So what we know about, like, SBF right now, his big thing is that um, he's ballsy. And he understood how to capitalize on the loophole. That's his genius at this point, though. Um, so it was early on in crypto, right? 27, not really in crypto, but, like, in this kind of particular game that we're talking about. So, uh, 2017. So, so like, they, they were playing the arbitrage game. They were playing between the Japanese cycles, the um, Chinese systems, different different um, systems to trade money, exchange it, uh, make make a profit on the arbitrage. So that that was fun and cool, right? And it sounds like Miss McAuley was all down. But then, you know, times change and things happen and people need to find new ways to to keep up with this. And it sounds like early when they were looking at when SBF was um, designing this mastermind plan of what FTX was going to look like and how that was all going to play out. Uh, Miss McAuley and a bunch of people thought that wasn't that wasn't so kosher. Um, it was a fun game while it was bar arbitrage, but now we're talking about like some major fraud and maybe we can, can get out of that. So it sounds like they all took off, but Gary stuck around. So let's let's think about that. So Gary stuck around. This is like 2017. Like so. Um, 
So SPF was probably feeling some kind of way. And like, I don't know anything about this, Miss McAuley. I don't want to put anything on her. Um, it sounds like she's tried to separate herself from this. But we also know that there are some like mixed interactions when it comes to SBF, um, his personal practices, his business practices. He doesn't have a whole lot of women around him. There is a possibility that there was some um, personal, if not professional, you know, feelings, some, some trauma he was dealing with when all of these people that he had been working with kind of just up and left and told him he was a fraud and they didn't want to play his game. That's, that's kind of dangerous. What was going on at that time? For Miss Caroline is the question I want to ask. Because y'all know I'm just, I, I like this chick. There's some. All right, here's the thing. Last uh, two days specifically, I've heard three or four people that I deeply respect say almost, quote, and verbatim, Caroline Ellison is so stupid. She is the dumbest person I've ever seen. Oh, and she won. She's, I think she's a mastermind. I think that she is probably one of the uh, greatest masterminds. In, in quite a while. So here we go. All right. All right. Let's talk about this. So, so Caroline was doing stuff at the time. So she was in the primes, which um, she was in school doing things. This is 2017 ish, 2016, 17, 18. Okay. So primes, Caroline Ellison, a story. I've been interested in math for as long as I can remember. In middle school, I started doing competitions, which, which exposed me to lots of new and interesting math topics. In high school, I continued to do math contests. I still had fun, but sometimes I wondered where the Point was in rushing through easy problems in 75 minutes. After a while, all AMC problems look the same. There's nothing particularly satisfying about doing better than usual because this time you remembered the angle bisector theorem. I wasn't sure if the accomplishments of good scores was worth the time I would have to put into achieving them. I wanted to do something more important somehow. It was the desire to delve further into math that led me to apply to primes, and it has been uh, it has been simply an amazing experience. My mentor, Georgia Fortuna, has been wonderful. Research can be overwhelming at first, but she's always been able to break it down for me into achievable steps. Her fortitude in the face of my procrastination and other failings has been impressive, and I would have gotten nowhere without all of her contributions. Pavel Edengoff and Tanya Kovanova, apologies for butchering those, um, who both have a lot of experience with science competitions have given me invaluable advice and ideas for my project. At first, I was definitely nervous. I didn't think I would find anything at all, and I didn't think I could really write a paper or give a math talk. Turns out I was wrong on all counts. Coming from a math contest background, research has been very difficult. I will sort of expect everything to have an elegant solution that can be found in a half hour or less. Now I have to remind myself that isn't always the case. Things are often messy, but when I do find something that might be interesting or useful, the fact that it exists at all among the chaos makes it doubly beautiful. Caroline Ellis. All right, so but um, I'm I'm interested because she's she's listed a mentor at this point in her life. Who is Miss Caroline talking to at this time? Georgia Fortuna, machine learning consultant. Um, so let's talk about her. Okay, so Miss Ellison's mentor and the person uh most helping her move mold herself in these pivotal years of her life as these these things are going on let's talk about it georgia georgia fortuna is a software developer and machine learning consultant at machine learning reply where she develops and supervises all kinds of ml projects from building topic detectors and conversational agents to developing forecasting models previously georgia focused on generating an uh, unsupervised ML for a more theoretical point of view, providing, uh, sorry, a uh, point of view before moving to real world cases and applications. Her background is in pure mathematics, giving her the ability to analyze and capture what is important and valuable when talking about innovation and helping her address commercial needs with machine learning technologies to build integrated systems that exploit data to increase business value. Uh, this is um, 
all the, in the, the stuff again. Um, so she was doing a, a, a talking. This is in a October of 2018. Um, she was um, presenting. The topic was unsupervised ML and fraud detection with deep neural networks. Uh, she is the specialist presenting on many industries, including banking, financial sectors, and insurance, continuously face the problem of detecting fraudulent activities. Georgia Fortuna explores state-of-the-art interactions in fraud detection and explains how unsupervised ML fits into the picture, focusing on signature checks and face recognition. So. At this point in time, um, Caroline Ellison's mentor is focused on how to identify uh, exploitations in businesses, um, specifically banking, financial sector, insurance. Um, how do I identify them for big news? So let's talk about, uh, so any consultant that knows how to find them, uh, they also understand exactly how to avoid being found. In the, so Miss Stupid over here, Miss Ignorant. Doesn't know much about nothing. Speaks a language um, unto many others. And has some people around her that know some things. Oh, so, okay, okay. So, that's what we know she's kind of doing at this time. She's But Caroline Ellison was also at Jane Street. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. This is going long. I'm going to try and wrap it up. Um, so, <clears throat> she was also at Jane Street. So, okay. Um, there's an interview where Caroline Ellison talks about um, not having been particularly close to SBF when they worked together, but at the time that all this went down, uh, when when Miss McAuley and the others had left, left SBF, he was in Berkeley, and uh, Caroline um, speaks to having, it's almost a Hollywood me cute at this point, like seriously. She ran into him at a, a random coffee shop. They got to talking. She asked him about Alameda. Uh, he was cagey in her words. He was cagey about what's going on. I'm like, oh. So his, possibly his chick, definitely his business partner, just like up and left him um, high and dry, told him he was a fraud. You show up out of nowhere having not been around for a while. Like this is, your specialty is understanding these things. And, um, He's clearly going through some kind of trauma in his life at this point, right? And this is no way I'm not defending SBF. I'm just thinking about what's really going on here. So he's vulnerable right now. People just left him. He was like in this FTX thing. This is what's going on. He's got Gary around. Kind of suspect on what's really going on with Gary and Caroline. Because we've talked about there's like the whole um, presumption that SBF and Caroline were together. But there was like the whole allusion to the polygamy. And Gary was there, too. And I don't know if maybe that there's more loyalty there. Who knows? But we know that Caroline somehow implanted herself in SBF's life right at the point where a pivotal woman in his life had been misplaced. And then there she is to fill a little bit of a gap, let's say. It's good timing. Good timing. So she gets in there and... Um, and he's he's rolling in the FTX thing, so Gary, all the, so they they do the things, and she eventually becomes the lead. There's other people, but I'm just looking at her. So they 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 got all that going on. So let, let let's play some of this out. So she's playing some games here. She knows exactly whatever stupid she wants to play. She's played the game where she's laughing her way to the bank. It's cool, but um, she knows exactly that she's trained. This is her people are telling us right. This is what they do. It's their specialty is understanding how to exploit technology, how you can use artificial intelligence to exploit these things. This is exactly what they have developed. And then you got this guy, Gary, over here. So we know his specialty too, right? He was for Google. He did the things. He writes code. That's what he does. He knows how to code. In fact, when the uh, first, like, what, $42 million exploit happened, SPF was real quick to say, you know, Gary wrote that back door. He, he was the one that knew what was, he, he wrote the code. That was his mastermind thing. And SBF, we know his his mastermind thing is the arbitrage, the loophole. He knows how to make money. He knows how to find money. So I, I posit Caroline is also a mastermind, but she knows how to exploit. She knew his weakness. SBF's weakness was hubris. He's an alpha male and he, the, oh, the ultimate, the ultimate downfall always, he uh, has hubris. So he thought they were, they were loyal to him. She's exploited this the whole time. She walked in damn well knowing he had, well, he needed a woman, one that could uh, lose money. She lost so much money, she lost it all. He needed to save her and funnel more money over to Alameda. 
why did she lose all this money? Because nothing about Caroline's history background tells me that she's stupid or just loses money or has no clue. Like, she was losing money in the bull market. What are you talking about? <sighs> or she was really good at knowing how to make it look like she was losing money. She was really good at playing stupid, going over to her dude over here. I said that that's a not a bad investor. You should shoot a little more my way. And yeah, we can shoot some to your political friends and all those things. We'll do all of that. But so that's just a bad investor shit. I don't think she's a bad investor at all. I think this chick just pulled off the heist of a lifetime. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you, are that she exploited his human. Okay, so then, then, SBF did his whole little circus show. He came out, and we talked about this, right? He made it very clear that what he was saying was, we got in over our heads, and we just didn't know it. It grew too much. He, that was the only established story right now. They could have stuck with that. I mean, it is it is an argument. It's not the best one. It's kind of, it's a hard go, but anything they did was a hard go, right? They really could have gone with, we're young, we're stupid, we're naive. We just got in all like, that's... Thousands turned into millions, turned into billions. We didn't know. And they probably could have gotten away with that. So there's another reason here. After all of this, Caroline has come out uh, with, with Gary. And they're like, no, nah, we did it. We knew. We knew about this. And, hmm. and now it's forced SBF to be like, oh, shit, we knew. Because he thought he had loyalty from these people. He thought if he that was the story, like he was in the background, right? Like, we're just going to blame stupid. And they're like, yeah, no, we're stupid. We don't know anything. And then she went and made herself a deal. And this guy, Gary, and there are so many pieces in this that I think maybe they're together. I don't know. I don't know what their connection is. Maybe it was just that he knew how to write the code to exploit the things, and she knew how to play the game to hide behind. Oh, I don't know. I saw you. We'll do this. Maybe that was just their, um, I don't know. I don't know the full extent of that. Mm -mm. But I do know she was there at a very pivotal time. And then this deal they've made where they've come up and gone with like, yeah, no, we, we knew and we're throwing him under the bus, which is forced SBF to then, yeah, say that, yeah, there's culpability there. Um, she knew what she was doing. She's walking away from this whole thing for $250,000 right now. Are you kidding me? I, I mean, there might be some more slaps on the wrist and maybe like some house arrest or something, but, uh, SBF had to take the limelight on this. I don't know. Gary's up to not That's cool, too. He also got away with 250. So they say, we'll see where all this plays out. But the list of the plea agreements she took was pretty extensive. And in, in that, uh, she agreed that it was an umbrella to all of the agencies listed there and all of the crimes listed within that plea. And so potentially, as yes, other agencies could look at her for other things. But at this point, I think she just walked away from all of this for a plea deal of, yeah, we did it, my bad. She gave up the 250000 to be free for the next year. She probably have to pay some restitution, maybe do some things. Who knows what kind of money these people actually stole, because this is just, oh, this is a long game. She was, oh, ooh, Caroline. Mm, Caroline, yeah, I don't. These are my thoughts. I don't know. What do you guys think? I've gone on for forever. This is, I think, my longest video, but I've missed you. Um, think thoughts with me. Let me know what you guys think. Think Caroline. Mm, Caroline. Keep watching. But you guys take care. Sending love. Almost Happy New Year's. It's my birthday tomorrow. So uh, I've, I've been thinking lots of thoughts. I'll probably have some other things to post in the next day or two. But uh, sending positive thoughts to everyone. Happy New Year. Take care. Talk to you later. I'm a D out. Oh, like, subscribe, all that cool stuff. And we'll talk soon.